your friends try to do that. And the topic can be absolutely everything. Today I'm going to talk about my tribe, the community to which I come from. I am from the Dimasa tribe from the northeast, and uh, 400, it's called no the Dimasa is 400 seconds. 400 seconds is not, obviously not enough to understand a tribe or a culture, but we can give it a try, right? So we are obviously uh, from the Mongolian race. We cross the we cross Bhutan and we settled in northeast. So we are known to have crossed the Brahmaputra, and the people who could cross the Brahmaputra are are the ones who became the Dimasas and the ones who left out or were you know, drowned in different places, uh, they have become different tribes. That's the belief. And obviously, uh, there is a huge debate between another tribe called the Boros and the Dimasas as to who came first. The Boros say that Boros came first and the Dimasas came out from the Boros. And the Dimasas say vice versa. That we are first, Boros are second. So these are not my pictures, all the rest are my pictures, so enjoy the pictures. <laughs> so obviously this is uh, the map of Northeast, and this is Assam, this is Assam. So this is Dimahasa, where most of us live. And so we are mostly found, we mostly live. <laughs> and some, okay, some parts of Nagaland, and our cultures and our kingdoms have mostly flourished on riverbanks. So that is why we are called Dimasa. Dima means mighty river and Sa means Sa. Dima Sa. Yeah? This is actually the picture of Brahmaputra. Very nice river. We should go. And this, let, let's talk about the religion a little bit that Dimasa follow. Dimasa follow what I call a traditional animism, where they give uh, you know, the status of God to spirits. So what happens in this, uh, this is that you don't pray to the good gods to give you blessings. You pray to the bad gods to leave. So that is the biggest difference. Right? So, but the times have changed. A lot of Hindu influence has happened now. So, uh, we cele celebrate all the Hindu festivals, right? And this is Durga Puja in my hometown. My hometown is half long, by the way, it's in Assam. I'm from Assam. I'll say about this later. Go on. Oh, okay. This one. I don't know if it's playing. This is a, a, a traditional uh, Dimasa worship that I had shot last year. There's no volume on it. Yes, volume on it. Check out the laptop. Yeah. So, picture on. And, and this one is actually a Durga Puja, which was celebrated in a Hindu Dimasa temple. It's an actually Hindu temple for Dimasa people. So, the rituals are very Bengali in nature. Want to see the full video? It's my video. You can just check it out. So, what is what is the new age Dimasa religion? It's not fashion, but you know what she's wearing and the way she's posing. It, it defines sort of what what we have become, right? So, the new age Dimasa religion is a mixture of the traditional animism and the mainstream Hindu beliefs, and all our beliefs are tweaked to sort of fall into place in the world. Forget it. A kin kinship system. <laughs> Our kinship system is built on the basis of two main attributes. One is the surname, another one is the clan system. So, as you can see in this picture, there, this is also it's actually my cousin who's uh, wearing <laughs> I photograph. So it's it's very Hindu in nature. So how does the kinship system run? Kin our kinship system is both patrilineal and matrilineal, in the sense that when a child is born the child takes the clan of the mother and the surname of the father. So that's why I call it both matrilinear and patrilinear. And this is my very postmodern sketch. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what I tried doing. So if you are, uh, if you have the same surnames, you are relatives. You take this two here. If you are of the same clan, your relatives. And there will be some surnames which will be related to each other, so you can't get married to those. So, that, so there will be less people we can get married to, okay? which results in this. That. I love her. So we can get married to her. So. <laughs> okay, let's learn some new words today. Okay, Jutai is uh, the namaste, and makam means food or cooked rice. Alu means not potato, it's cat. 
I'll lose it. So let's remember some words. Try and remember some words. I'll ask you a question at the end. Okay, remember one word. I'll ask you a question at the end. Okay, in language. Uh, the Dimasa king loved his Bengali Brahmins. Okay, so that's why he had a lot of them in his kingdom. So that resulted in many things. One of the major things was that Dimasa was written in Bengali script in the olden times. So the first in the history, if you find the first, the first literatures in Dimasa were written in Bengali. So later on, when the Ahoms came in, it started. You know, Assamese became the more important language. So Dimasa started being written in Assamese. And later, because of the, you know, the missionary schools came in and everything, Christianity came in, then now we are trying to formulate uh, Dimasa language in English. So actually, people have started uh, introducing those books in English. So who are we? Do we even exist? So because we have to share our land with a lot of other tribes, right? So there is always a fight for supremacy as to whose land do we live in. So, so when I have to go out, out of the Northeast, uh, I have to explain why am I not speaking in Assamese? Why do I? Uh, why am I still Assam? So all of these small, small things come up into some. They result into these very. What should I say? Demands. <laughs> Call it demands. Because of this militancy. Start started, because they wanted their own state, so that they can have their own limelight, right? So I'm gonna talk about it later. So what is that word? Dimasa word for namaste. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.